happy EDS month, lupus awareness month, Lyme disease awareness month, fibromyalgia awareness month, arthritis awareness month and peripheral neuropathy awareness month. Wow! And I'm sure there's more that I missed out as well. But anyway, I'm in the park today. I've just come out of my physio and the reason why I'm here today is because I want to tell you all about my new wheelchair, give you all the lowdown. It's called the Wheel C2 from TGA Mobility. So I'm going to get all into it. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So if you've been here for a while, you'll know all about my old wheelchair. It was a manual wheelchair, actually I still have it. It just was very old, I had it for four years. So it needed servicing, which I did go to my GP about, but they did inform me that it was a really long wait because of the whole NHS situation after COVID. And I just decided that overall, if I wanted to be independent, having a manual wheelchair wasn't gonna work for me because if you're unaware, I have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, the hypermobile type, which means I have faulty collagen and everything in my body is stretchy, not just my muscles and skin, but my organs as well. So my joints dislocate a lot, which means that I cannot walk unassisted. I can stand for short periods of time, but then I fall and I faint, my legs give way and I just topple, which is an ideal, especially when I'm going out and about. And one of my biggest problematic areas is my shoulders, well, it's my knees, my hips and my shoulders. So as you can imagine, if I was to have a manual wheelchair, I can't push my wheelchair because I weigh like 56 kilograms and for me to push that is a lot like I don't know how some people push their own wheelchairs but they are incredible because I can't and it's not just the strength aspect it's just the fact that my shoulders pop out I figured rather than every time I want to go out having to rely on my husband to push me wherever it is I need to go it would be better to get a power chair now there's loads of different designs you could get a scooter i think they're called electric scooters or you could get a power chair which is this where it is literally oh, like a regular wheelchair but it's got the controls of one side and you use one hand to control it rather than a scooter where you have a steering wheel in front and your arms are out see for me having my hands in this motion would be too hard for a long period of time whereas sitting like this is ideal the fact that it's electric means i get independence which i'm just so happy about the other thing that's not ideal about my manual wheelchair in particular is the fact that the wheels are very hard and so when you go over any bumpy roads, especially in London, we have cobbled roads everywhere, you feel absolutely everything on the road. So, hey. Whoa, Chris, that is a bad driver. Sorry. That is bad driving. Sorry, you got me on that, that curb. Oh, my shin. Your shin? My shin. My knees. <laughs> <laughs> and when my body is so loose and everything is so stretchy, just going over a bump can cause my knee to dislocate or my hip to pop out or my shoulder to just go out of place and I would come home in more pain than before I left the house and obviously that puts me off going outside which isn't good because going outside is really important for your mental health and for exercise and for keeping our circulation going and all that stuff. I want to be able to go to my own hospital appointments and go visit friends without having to bring my husband everywhere and stuff like that it's just having that bit of independence and I actually had comments on my video it's, it's quite old now this video my mobility aids I'll link it somewhere here and people are saying that for EDS my wheelchair is really bad and could be causing me more problems than actually helping me and that's when I started my power chair electric chair wheelchair searching journey 
but I'm gonna get into it and I'll even insert clips of me using it. Careful, this Okay. I gotta press it. Can't you press it? Okay. I can't touch things that other people have touched. No. And you know that anyway. <laughs> Watch how it propels me up now. Oh, it didn't do that. It part. didn't do it, no, I was gonna say. <laughs> so I'm like this. And if I want to turn. Very nice. It pivots on itself. Pivot! Pivot! Is it going to propel me? There we go. <laughs> it? Yeah. It's because um, these bobbly things that are used for people who are blind or low vision, um, they're bumpy. Sensors. I don't know if you can see on the back, it's got sensors and it's got sensors on the front and it recognises it so pushes extra to get me over. <laughs> yeah, you know you have to do it. Can I cross? No, you can. Right, this one is really steep and it's going to push me really forward and I'll get close to the right. See? Yeah. <laughs> and I have to navigate really quickly so I don't go right into the glass. And sometimes, if there's people there, I have to ask them to move, otherwise I'll go straight into the people. So it's just something to think about. But I got used to it now. It's two months I've had it, isn't it? Yeah. So the first thing you'll notice about power chairs, electric chairs, electric scooters is the price. The price is unreal. You could get secondhand ones on Facebook Marketplace and other secondhand buying websites. However, the only thing with those is you don't get the warranty, the reassurance that if it breaks down or something happens, you've got somebody to come out and help you out with it. And you don't know how old it is. You don't know whether it's gonna need servicing and when all that kind of stuff so for me i wanted a new one and i wanted to speak to somebody who had a lot of experience with it and i thought the best thing to do was to go to a showroom so i started looking up showrooms in england and i realized the closest one to me was somewhere in brighton which as somebody who's a wheelchair user who doesn't drive and who has a horrible manual chair that you fill everything in it just wasn't ideal because I would have to wait for a day where I'm not flaring up or I'm not feeling too bad in order to make that journey and I'd have to inconvenience Chris for him to come down with me because they're only open nine to five I went online and I looked and I looked and I looked and I mean I looked and I found a company called TGA mobility and what makes them so different is the fact that they physically come to you. So they have drivers and what would you call it? Customer service assistants, mobility assistants, all around the country. And they physically ask you, which wheelchairs are you interested in? And they'll bring them to you. And the reason why I like this is because what they explained to me is, that you're gonna use that wheelchair in your house, in your environment, around your area. And if you try the wheelchair in a showroom, you don't know whether you're gonna like it on your road, in your house, going down to the shops, whatever it is you need it for. And if they bring it to you, you can test it out and try it for yourself, which is amazing. I'll insert some videos of when, um, I think his name was Graham, came to see me. Do you want to do it? 
Okay. And I'll be here to catch you. Okay. Maybe. Whoa. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. You've, it's okay, but yeah, I could easily fall out. You've got to watch the point. I mean, in terms of steering, there's no difference really. It's more about the comfortability, I find. Yeah. That, that was nothing, yeah. Oh, that's so good. I want to see if I can get into the living room. Oh, wrong way. So not only did that feel super personalized, but I didn't feel rushed. He only brought two wheelchairs, which I thought might be like a waste of time because I don't know if somebody wants to see five, for example, it might be more worth it. But I said to him, I only want two. And the first one I was interested in was called The Will. And the only reason why I wanted to check that one out is because it was cheaper. And then this was the second one I wanted to try out, which is called The Will C2. In all honesty, I thought I was gonna go for the other one because it was cheaper and smaller. And when my parents drive me to places, it's easier to fold up. I just thought it's lighter and more maneuverable. However, when I tried it out, it felt too flimsy and the seat wasn't very soft. So if I show you this seat, let me move my cat Ow! cushion, crazy cat lady much. <laughs> this chair is incredible because the seat is actually made of memory foam. Like it's so soft and everyone who sits on it absolutely loves it. See, this is nice because it's so flat, but I don't know if you saw, there was a little bit of a incline, decline on the other side and it was fine. So I love it. It's nice as well because I can hold your hand. Yeah. Whereas before I couldn't do that. And I barely even feel like I have to move anything. So if you've got joint problems in your hands, you know that this is going to be great for you because it really requires minimal, even minimum touching it. And as soon as I let go, it stops. I genuinely feel supported and comfortable. And when you do go over bumps, and cobbles and ditches and things like that although yes it will bounce the impact isn't as much on your body which is just amazing and it has suspension in it which helps the impact be lighter as well which i absolutely love it's like down here, isn't it? can you see the suspension yeah there's a it's honestly incredible with the other wheelchair, the, the Will C1, I think it is, it doesn't have suspension. So when I went over the bumps on my road, it hurt so badly. And as somebody who suffers from sciatica, <laughs> oh boy, does it hurt your bum. And it's not just that, it's like everything. When you have chronic pain or when you're extremely exhausted, the last thing you need is a wheelchair that makes your life harder. But obviously if you don't plan to go out as often or your budget is lower, then I would say the other one is a really good option. The other thing that really helps with the impact is the wheels. So the wheels aren't massive or really big like your typical wheelchair. There's two smaller wheels. And I don't know if you can see, they spin this way and they also spin that way. You get bobbly roads in London and it can be really, really, really challenging. <laughs> but as I said, these wheels are so good and because it's got um, suspension, I don't really feel the impact so much unless it's like really bumpy. And even then, <laughs> Obviously they turn like a normal wheel plus they turn sideways which helps you to go around sharp corners or avoid say like um, a loose tile or go over something that has a hump which is really great. The other feature is this section that your feet go on. This is one flat slab. It does go up if you don't want it but 
when you put it down it is just flat and it's nice because you can move your legs about whereas with my old manual wheelchair you had one foot here and one foot here because they were separated and you could only keep your feet on a certain place and I just find that really uncomfortable as somebody who has restless leg syndrome plus my <laughs> legs are always going out of place so I need to constantly click them like right now it's got a basket underneath which my old wheelchair never had the manual one and it's quite big I mean I don't, there we go it just comes out and it can hold up to six kilograms of stuff like I physically put this whole blanket in there and there was still so much space left and here is where the battery goes in and it's chargeable and how long does the battery last I mean wow. it lasts a really long time and you can charge it even on the train if that's where you go and quite a cool thing that Graham told me was is that if you're planning on going somewhere really really far yeah, thank you Chris <laughs> if you're planning on going somewhere really really far you can buy a separate battery so you charge both and when that one goes low you yeah. just swap them over which is really cool the nice thing about having that personalized experience with TJ mobility is that everything is personalized to you the wheelchair is based off your weight your height your diameter you don't measure a person's diameter do you <laughs> your width size your hip size even your back so the back bit here is based off of how long my back is the armrest is based on how long my arms are so the whole wheelchair is based off of my measurements the other thing i wanted to show you is the armrest so you can see here it fits my arm perfectly right what i love about this is look there's a clip back here all you've got to do is unclip it and this moves back so you know when you go to a coffee shop and they've got those tables that are really high up and you want to go in and not be too far away of a gap so you can eat and have your coffee normally it's perfect for that so let me just do the other side it works the same way you just unclip it and it pushes back and it locks itself in and then this is how you can get somebody to manually push you so if I didn't want to use the electric aspect of it all Chris has got to do is just push me with these handles do you want to demonstrate right so we've turned the power off and that's Chris We needed another cameraman for this, didn't we? <laughs> so that's if you don't want to use the power aspect of it. The nice thing about this is, is you turn it on and once the arrow stops, you know you can go. This is really, really easy to navigate. And not only can you point it upwards, you can actually twist it so that it's sideways if that's what you prefer. I personally prefer it this way and then I just go, I barely even need to move as I go along and there's also three settings so one is the lowest, four is the highest and there's also a beeper if people are in the way <laughs> so let's go So the first thing we discussed when Graham came was my budget. I'm going to get into that now. So basically, if you've looked up the wheelchair, this particular one, even the model below it, you know it is really expensive. And I mean, any wheelchair is expensive in general. And especially if you're getting a power chair or a electric scooter, they come with a certain price. Now, because I now get PIP, I was going to call it P-I-M-P <laughs> I don't know why I keep calling that I get PIP which is personal independence payment which used to be called disability living allowance it's now called personal independence payment I qualify to go on something called the mobility scheme now it depends on 
which criteria you fall under with your personal independence payment. So it's scored out of 12. One is the highest level of mobility and 12 is the lowest level of mobility and I scored a 12. Now how they do the scoring is based off your personal needs. So can you walk unassisted? Why do you need help with certain things? And then based on your score, you get a certain amount of personal independence payment. Now I get the highest amount because I scored a 12. And because of that, I'm able to get the most expensive wheelchair. So if your score is lower, say for example, you score a 10 or an eight, maybe you won't qualify for this wheelchair but you might be able to qualify for the slightly cheaper one, which is not cheap at all and is still an amazing wheelchair. But Graham or whoever comes to see you from TJ Mobility will explain that to you. Now, because I'm on the highest band in terms of PIP, I was able to get whichever wheelchair I wanted. Now this Will C2 is the most expensive one they offer, but I don't pay for it. The mobility scheme pays for it, but it does come out of my personal independence payment. So the way personal independence payment works is, based off of your score, you get a certain amount a month, and that amount is divided into what you need for mobility, one amount is for bills and the other amount is a living allowance and if you qualify for the mobility scheme that what is accounted for under PAMP is all under the umbrella for mobility which is what you can use to get a wheelchair. This wheelchair I pay I think £160 a month however it doesn't come out of my account each month I physically don't get that paid into my PIP so rather than getting a certain amount a month that amount is automatically deducted for my mobility needs and i don't even see it come out of my account it just doesn't get paid into my account and i'm in this scheme for three years and what's so good about it is that if it breaks down somebody has to come and fix it within 24 hours they have to change it, service it, and they have to make sure that it is working properly. So essentially, I don't own it, I loan it, but it is mine. And then after three years, they take it back and then I can get the newest model. So it makes it really easy for the disabled person who's looking to get a mobility aid because you say, right, I want this, please come to my house, this is the one I want, apply through TGA Mobility or whichever company you go for and they do it for you. It's like really hassle-free, which I really like and it just takes all the stress out of it for you. I thought it would be really hard and I'd have to fill in all these forms and blah, 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 but you don't. Plus you get that relief because you're disabled so that helps obviously if you wanted to and you had the money you don't need a mobility scheme you could just pay for it outright but then you have a big lump sum to pay which is an ideal and i think because i looked into it you have to pay it off within one year not three years so there's that to consider as well now that all that is said and done let me show you the fancy parts it's really, really pretty. I love these pink panelling, which I chose by the way. Oh, this standing up and sitting down is not great for my joints, but I do it for you guys. I do it for you guys. This pink panel here, I think it's called champagne blush, something like that, but they have black, red, blue, white, <laughs> silver. I can't remember a bunch of different colors. And we've got this section here. These are called, I think they're called cup holders, but they're in place for you to hold your walking stick as I've got here, or your um, crutches or whatever it is you may need to take with you. The wheelchair automatically comes with one cup holder. And because I often use crutches, I've got a walking stick today because I find when I have this wheelchair, I don't get up out of it very much. Because I use crutches, I thought, oh, I'll get two, one for each crutch. But you can actually fit both crutches in one cup holder. And I think I paid like 50 quid for that extra cup holder, which now that I look back on it is totally 
a waste of money because if you do use crutches they can totally fit in one cup holder let me show you how they fit in right it's got this velcro that you just undo and really simply it comes out and that's it grass is an interesting terrain however this wheelchair has no problem with it the old one used to didn't it so i'm trying to turn and it does it with a bit of resistance but it does it look there's a dip here but it's gonna do it see yeah and it doesn't get stuck and if i turn it's still good and i'll tell you my old wheelchair could not do grass you didn't know nice <laughs> this is my favorite bit watch it pivots on itself <laughs> amazing so obviously the other thing I was nervous about when I first got one is the steering <laughs> whether I'll be able to drive it properly and at first no I wasn't very good at all and it took me maybe two or three goes before I felt confident enough to not have Chris around me but I think the best way around that is to just take it around your area around your house if you have the space or the means to and just practice because that's what helped me and now i get on trains pretty confidently and i can maneuver through tight spaces and tight gaps chris is always like oh you're a good driver aren't i mm, do you feel confident leaving me to to drive on my own now of really but you didn't at the beginning though did you yeah see it just takes time and practice and the only other thing that really gets to me is you will get silly comments from people you get people laughing at you because they think it's funny or they think you have fun in it or you get people saying to you can i have a ride and that is the worst one and that's society's problem not yours and i've just learned to drown that out the more we keep going keep pushing forward the more these things become normal i think that's everything i've got to say so i hope this video was helpful hope you found it interesting let me know if you too are thinking about getting a power wheelchair or an electric scooter or if you're happy with your manual one or just crutches or what do you use or do you not use with that thank you so much for watching thanks for being here and i'll see you in the next one Bye.